I'm delighted now to be joined by Peter Howitt, lead author of the Lancet Commission on Technologies for Global Health. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Could you tell us, first of all, what we mean by this term, technologies for global health? Okay. Um, we can think of health technologies uh, like x-rays, um, like vaccines and drugs, which are very specifically focused on health issues. But then there are a range of other technologies which benefit health. Um, there's information and communication technologies, for instance, like mobile phones and the internet, which can be a really good way of communicating information about health. And then there's what we broadly in the report call technologies for global health, um, which include things like flushing toilets, improved agricultural equipment, and better roads. Now each of those, the main aim isn't health, but it, it's a key byproduct. For instance, if you have better agricultural equipment, um, you produce more crops and get better nutrition in the population, so they're better able to resist disease. So it's quite a broad term, really. It, it is, and I think the key is to, for health advocates to, to think broadly so that we're not just focusing on, on the purely health issues, but looking at the, the bigger picture of the wider determinants of health. So what's the background of this report? Is it the premise, really, that technology isn't playing enough of a role in, where it's most needed? That's absolutely right. Um, at the moment, there's a real inverse relationship between the availability of technology and where it's most needed. So we have um, companies uh, spending lots of money on research and development, uh, refining, um, say, a million pound CT scanner, so it gives a slightly better picture when there are huge numbers of people in Africa who don't have access to even the most basic x-ray. And we think that needs to, that needs to change. So there needs to be more development of technologies suitable for the world's poor. Have you got some examples then of how technology can lead to health improvements in the lower middle income countries for, for communicable and non-communicable diseases? Yes. Yeah. Um, there are some, some really good examples from the last few years. Um, Long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets have played a big impact on malaria. Uh, over the last decade, malarial deaths have fallen by about a third and a lot of that is due to um, the use of the bed nets. Um, HIV AIDS is another example where the availability of cheap um, fixed dose combinations of antiretroviral drugs have meant that instead of being a, a sort of immediate death sentence, it's increasingly becoming a sort of chronic, chronic condition which could be managed over time. For non-communicable diseases, um, I think technology is not playing such a big impact at the moment, uh, and that's an area which could benefit from research. There are some examples um, from the UK, actually, where uh, mobile phones have been used to help people stop smoking um, by providing uh, text reminders, um, and, and there's clear evidence that that works. So it'd be great to see, does that sort of thing also work in, uh, say, Southeast Asia? Um, because I think technology could, could really help support behavioural change in that sense. One of the, the things that's mentioned and highlighted in the report is frugal technologies. What, what do you mean by that? So by frugal technologies, uh, we mean something that's designed specifically for the needs of the world's poor. So rather than taking a, um, a stripped down version of something from a high income country, you look at the needs of, of someone in sub-Saharan Africa and say, well, what are the key components of the, of the technology and design it from the bottom up. Um, people have tried to, to classify some of the characteristics. Uh, the University of Santa Clara in the US has, has set out sort of eight characteristics of a frugal technology. Um, and they include things like affordability, the fact that it's, it's rugged and that it's made from local materials. Um, we give a number of examples of frugal technologies in the report, uh, including the E-Ranger, um, which is a motorcycle ambulance. Um, so it can operate on, in, in terrain where a conventional ambulance just wouldn't be able to go uh, and, and carry uh, often women actually to health facilities uh, uh, if they're having difficulties during, during birth. 
And is that something um, that's already in use? And indeed, are other food grill technologies already playing a role? Um, th there are. Um, the, the e Ranger, for instance, uh, started off in Malawi and is now used across quite a, a number of um, African countries. Uh, another example um, of a frugal technology is the um, electrocardiogram that's been developed in India by General Electric. Uh, and that started off to solve the needs of, of the Indian uh, market, but actually has been taken up by um, primary care doctors in Europe because it means they can now perform ECGs without needing to refer people onto hospital. What would you say have been the key recommendations and findings that have come out of this report? Okay, so the first one is just that we need more frugal technologies. We, we need to think about how aid agencies, for instance, can, can fund and incentivise their development. I think the second thing is not becoming fixated on the gadgets alone. Um, technology it, it itself doesn't solve things. You need a um, a broader innovation and, and way of making that te technology work. A good example would be a new vaccine um, is only as effective as the, the process by which people are vaccinated. So you need to combine it with uh, approaches um, such as reminding people um, through text messages, for instance. And the text message uh, example then feeds onto a third key point, which is make use of technology that already exists Billions of people, um, even some of the most poorest, even some of the poorest people in the world, have access to a mobile phone. So, build on that, create applications and approaches that can utilise that existing technology. And do you feel positive coming out of, of this report that uh, people are ready to embrace more technologies and and are ready to to take on more and sort of go with this? I think so. I think there's there's a growing um, recognition that, that we need to move beyond, I suppose, sort of channeled and prescriptive ways of, of giving aid and improving health to giving people the tools to um, look after their own health and improve things. And I actually think um, as we look to the, uh, how progress and development is measured after the Millennium Development Goals in 2015, that there should be some kind of measure of um, countries' ability to create and utilise new technologies to improve health. Peter, we'll leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.